Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Sandra Sai on the issue of consequences of willful sin. The session was recorded on the 25th of November 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hi everyone, I'm here today with Jesus and we're going to record a personal feedback session in response to a question that was asked of us on the Divine Truth Forum. So okay. I, <laughs> I chose this question, um, it was actually written Someone, on this very day. On this very day. <laughs> <laughs> the, what are we, 26th? 25th, 25th of November. Yes. Um, yes. And it was actually written uh, asking a question uh, with reference to the Life Elysian. We're going to do a book discussion together yes. about that. Yes. Which we haven't started yet. No. But I felt that this question actually merited a whole discussion on its own. Yes. Because it's... Uh, there's and quite and probably it's going to be the kind of questions that we include in a lot of our program and our assistance groups as well with regard to sin, understanding sin, God's laws and engaging God's laws. There's a lot of issues a involved lot. in this particular feedback session, but the beauty of the session is we can introduce some of those principles yes. as a part of that. So everyone at home can start to... Ponder about those matters. <laughs> yeah. Swat up before the group. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. All right. So Sandra wrote this um, post to us and she says, Is it harder to repent when a person does something bad knowingly and with the expectation of being able to get rid of the consequences by repenting? <laughs> Let me be a bit clearer in case it's hard to understand my question. Mm. If a person knows something to be bad and they know that there will be consequences for doing it <coughs> and they choose to do it anyway, thinking that since they know about the law of repentance and forgiveness that they can engage that law to get rid of the consequences, <laughs> will they have the same amount of difficulty in being able to repent for that sin as someone that did it but not with the intention of getting away with it by engaging the law of repentance and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel there's a lot of issues that are raised here. There Firstly, do we really do anything without feeling like there's, do we, ever, do we ever really do anything wrong where we don't actually at some point feel that it might be wrong? Mm. Well, I don't know. I don't know if you could really even answer that in the negative. Like I think most of the time we do do things wrong knowing that they are wrong. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm talking now about purposeful, purposeful sin. Many people engage purposeful sin. That, that is the reality and, and, and often try to get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because even if a person doesn't know about the law of repentance and forgiveness, there is an inbuilt mechanism in our soul, isn't there? Mm, called it's a called conscience. our conscience. <laughs> <laughs> that God has placed there to help us really navigate what's right and wrong. Yes, and it's only those people whose consciences has been injured at a very young age that don't have an, a knowledge of, the, of the, their own wrongdoing. But if they had any ethical standard, they would see the damage of their own wrongdoing to other people at least, yeah. and therefore be able to see that something must be wrong with what they're doing. But perhaps what we need to do in answering this question firstly is sort of a bit more systematically answer it. I think firstly we need to discuss how humankind view human laws yes. <laughs> and compare that to how humankind, how, well, also how humankind then views God's laws and then compare that to how God's laws really are. <laughs> because yeah. I think that there's a whole discussion in itself. So maybe we can just encapsulate Sandra's question. She's saying, look, um, all things aside, I know, or if I uh, hypothetically knew that I was about to do something that was wrong from yep. God's perspective, from love's perspective. But I knew about the law of forgiveness and repentance. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to let myself go ahead and do this because later on I'll just do the repentance bit <laughs> and it'll all be okay. Yeah. That's basically what she's asking, isn't it? Not only that, she's also really saying, and, and this is a, the hidden message within the question, and that is she's also really saying that it's it's okay to attempt to mitigate the the 
um, what we reap from from the law, mm-hmm. um, or you know what we've done wrong from the law after after we've broken the law. It's okay to try to mitigate it or manipulate the the responses from the whoever is the law giver. Or and, the penalty imposer. Yeah. yeah. And this is where we need to discuss quite a few things because the majority of the human race has, firstly, a large injury when it comes to law. We all believe, and, and unfortunately, because human laws are much like this, mm-hmm. we all believe that we can break the law at some point in time and be able to either get away with it completely or if not completely get away with it, then mitigate the circumstances afterwards in some way by manipulation or cajoling or, you know, some kind of bribery or some... Getting a really good lawyer. <laughs> yeah, getting a really good lawyer, some kind of emotional manipulation, you know, yeah. just pander to the person who's the authoritarian. Yeah. And a lot of these kind of desires come from our childhood, actually. Yeah. Most people do not realise, but the average male uh, parent will allow his daughter in particular to get away with things that he wouldn't allow an average person to get away with as long as she loves him and cherishes him and gives him sweet talks him and so forth and the average female adult who has a child it will also do the same thing for for their own son Mm -hmm. and for many adults who have children they will do for it for both children So in other words, they basically say, you're my children and because you're my children, I'm going to let you get away with things that I'll never let somebody else get away with. As long as you give me something. There's always the proviso. Yes, Yes. something. And and this is where we then get inculcated with that idea that, look, as long as I kind of do the manipulative thing, really, isn't it? It is. Then the penalty won't be as bad. As long as I give the person who is in authority, the addiction they yes. want, in yep. other words. Yep. 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 Go on. Then I, I'll get away with it a bit. or I'll get away won't... with it even up to murder <laughs> yeah. in many cases, right? Yeah. How many parents will uh, try to help their ch- child? H- historically, many parents have tried to help their children uh, get away literally with, with murder, murder or with rape or with other serious crimes just because that particular person is their child. Of course, if they personally were murdered or raped, they wouldn't want the person to get away with anything then. Mm -hmm. So so obviously there's ethical issues where most people have this viewpoint that because it's their children, they are allowed to get away with much, much more than the average person on the planet should be allowed to get, uh, should be allowed to get away with by law. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge problem because what that does is it causes those particular children to grow up to believe that law can be mitigated. There's no such thing as a non-negotiable law. All laws are negotiable. <laughs> All yeah. laws are, the penalty is negotiable. And, and, and most of the time, the belief in the human race and by most of those children are brought up in those kind of environments is that anything can be gotten away with as long as you just don't tell the truth about it. Yeah. So in other words, if you lie about it, you'll get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so this is a big emotional injury in the human race. Mm. Can I add something else that Mm -hmm. occurs to me while we're talking about it? And that's about um, a lot of parents will uh, go easier in terms of penalty on their child if their child punishes themselves. Correct. And this is where there's a lot of misconception about what true repentance is on the earth as well. And therefore, a lot of people kind of grow up with this idea, look, I'll do the wrong thing. But as long as I show them I'm really sorry and I was really wrong and I'm really a bad girl, then I'll get away with it. Correct. And so it's no surprise then that kind of attitude starts getting superimposed on God, hey? Yes. So so there are a number of very complicated emotional injuries that get imposed upon the child that by the time the child becomes an adult, they they firmly believe that they either need to self-punish in order to mitigate or avoid the outcome, Mm -hmm. or they need to pander and and cajole cajole and bribe through emotional injuries in particular, but sometimes through physical things, the person in authority so that they can get away with what they've done. Now, basically, there is a belief, uh, and unfortunately, because human ki- humankind produces a large amount of unnecessary laws, it adds to this belief. It, does. it adds to the belief that 
there, that we can get away with the law most of the time, right? <laughs> so, so the other day we were talking about this and saying like, if here we live out in the bush and the, the um, speed limit in some places is say 80 kilometres an hour. <clears throat> Now, we can drive along at 100 kilometres an hour, and unless there happens to be a very rare passing police officer with a speed gun, there's not going to be any penalty for us breaking the law. Or if a wallaby jumps out in front of us, <laughs> there might be a penalty for breaking yeah, the law. Yeah, there's certain circumstances, like if a child or, or, or a person was in front of us and we couldn't stop, or under those circumstances, we'll get caught. Yes. But, but it's rare it's to get rare. caught. It's rare, and so... The, <laughs> what we were discussing was that a lot of people then have this feeling that as long as no, as no one sees me, it didn't happen or it's not an issue. Or there's well, it's no not penalty. like it didn't happen. They, they themselves realise it happened, yeah. but, but they basically feel it's not important until they get caught. And then when they get caught, of course, it's important. <laughs> yeah. But even then, there's the mitigating circumstances that they want to present. You know, there's, al there's always an excuse. And then on top of that, they go and get a lawyer generally who will try to get them out of some technicality and so forth. So, so not only is it when we get caught that, mm -hmm. uh, that we've gotten caught, but now we're now always still trying to mitigate the circumstances of the outcome of our decision. So this is how we treat humankind's law. This is how we treat humankind's laws. Yeah. And as a result of that, we treat God's laws the same. This is our big mistake. Mm -hmm. Our big mistake is believing that humankind's laws are similar in nature to God's laws. And, and, it could, and it's one of the biggest mistakes we make in our entire life. Yeah. Because the reality is all of God's laws are not negotiable. Mm -hmm. They are all immovable, unchangeable. Mm -hmm. They all have exactly the same penalty for exactly the same thing. That penalty is immediately imposed, whether you're aware of the imposition or not. And so you cannot get away with anything. And if you truly understood that, you would never even try, try. to get away with anything. <laughs> That's right. So we can't say that we truly understand one of God's laws from an emotional perspective if we continually act in defiance towards it. Exactly, exactly. And to, to um, finish my analogy that, that we started talking about, about the speed limit, yep. when you, humankind's law, we feel it's, it's pretty much a negotiable, there's no definite penalty that's going to happen when I exceed Not the speed that, limit. Not only that, it's highly unlikely there will be a penalty. Yes. Highly unlikely, by chance, you know. Yep. There might be a 0.1% chance that you get caught. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or something. Or well, something terrible. bad happens as a result of what you're doing. Now, of course, the more dangerous the activity, the higher the likelihood. But even with the most dangerous activities, for instance, murder yeah. or rape or those kind of activities, which are terribly detrimental to your own soul, on Earth, you, there is still a large majority of people who get away with them. Yes. So get, get away without pe earthly penalty. Yeah, and particularly when it comes to things like rape and violent, violent, cri violent crime, where threats are in, and blackmail are involved. Yeah. You know, lots of people get away with those, believing that they are basically immune to prosecution. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if we, if we draw the analogy of the exceeding the speed limit to God's laws, Correct. if, for example, God had, if a, God ever had a speeding limit, speed law. limit <laughs> the minute we step over the 80 kilometre mark, Bang, 81, yeah. penalty is imposed. Correct. doesn't matter who's there, who sees us, what happens, it doesn't Whether matter. You're alone. Our intention was to go over 81. Yep. We, we floated a law. There's even a penalty uh, on the atten intention before you actually... And yes. Because there's actually a law that talks about that, where, that God has about the human soul, which is about intention yes. as well. Yep. So just even having the intention to do it. Yeah. imposes a penalty of its own. So driving along <laughs> saying, you know, it's 80 Ks and I'm doing 80 Ks, but you know what, I should be doing 85. Yeah, and perhaps if we relate it to a more serious <laughs> thing. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I feel like it's a bit, it's a know, bit flippant. flippant. <laughs> yeah. But the reality is every single one of God's laws have a penalty imposed even if we intend to do them and we don't do them. Yeah. And then there is a larger penalty imposed if we intend to do them and do them. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a penalty imposed if we didn't intend to do them, but they happen. And there's also a penalty imposed if we didn't intend to do them, uh, but, but somebody else did them and they happened to us as a result. Now, if I give some examples of that. Yeah. The law of gravity is one of these immovable laws. <laughs> so, so if you're up on a 20-storey building 
and, uh, and you jump off, which is a purposeful intention of your own, then obviously you break the law of mm -hmm. gravity and it's highly unlikely you'll survive a 20 story fall uh, intact and, and alive on Earth. Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely, yeah. yes. Yeah. And so it's highly likely you will pass, yeah. right? The, that's the breaking of that particular law. But the fact that you did it intentionally also breaks a number of other laws. Yes. And the fact that you even decided you wanted to do it, knowing that it would harm you, breaks another group of laws, mm -hmm. all of which have a penalty upon the soul. Mm -hmm. Now, every one of those laws are like the law of gravity. The penalty is imposed immediately. The penalty is there because of, the, of God's laws being imposed in an immovable way. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are non-negotiable. There's no way you can negotiate with them unless you completely understand a higher law of some kind. Mm -hmm. Right. So in other words, if you jumped off the building with a parachute, then you might survive the fall. But if you jump off with maybe a, um, you know, like a hang glider, then it's highly likely if you know how to fly the thing that you will survive the fall because you're now engaging a higher law. And also your intention is different if you jump with a hang glider, isn't of course, it? Of course, your so intention is to have some fun, yes. not to harm yourself. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you just jump off the building to hit the ground, then obviously your intention is to harm yourself. Mm. And obviously they're very, very different intentions. Now, the same law can apply when we're pushed, when we jump, or when we fell. Mm -hmm. So in other words, one is a mistaken action, falling. We break the law of gravity, but we don't break the other laws. The other laws that are about intention and the other laws are about which are about love of self, harming self, caring for yourself, caring for your life, and those kind of laws, which are all soul-based laws, we don't break those laws. Mm -hmm. So we only break the law of gravity, so we still die, yeah. but there's no penalty upon our soul for breaking the rest of the laws, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it was a mistake in action, a, a, yeah. an accident, if mm -hmm. you could call it that. Then there is also when we're uh, pushed off. Now, obviously, we had no intention to jump, Mm -hmm. So we don't break those laws. But now the person who pushed us had an intention. Mm -hmm. And the, all of those intention-based laws by, uh, that, inter, that are impact upon the soul are now imposed upon that person, mm -hmm. not ourselves. So even though we die and seemingly we've paid the penalty for the other person's decision, the reality is the only penalty was we broke the law of gravity, but we did not break the other laws of intention or the other laws of actual action that are all out of harmony with love. Yeah. And so there would be no soul-based penalty mm -hmm. for, for us having that law broken unless we went back to the person and expressed a whole heap of rage and tried to harm them. Then, of, yeah. course, <laughs> then of <laughs> course, we would be beginning to have the same kind of intentions and therefore break similar kinds of laws. Mm -hmm. Now, if you analyse all of that, basically what we're saying here, and we'll we get back to her question yeah. uh, and how it relates in a minute, yeah. but basically what we're saying is the big problem with the human race is we all think we can get away with law. We think that law is negotiable. Mm -hmm. We think that we can move and, and manoeuvre around the law. We can obfuscate. Uh, we, can, we can disclaim, you know... You disclaim our disclaim, responsibility. Disclaim responsibility. Take no responsibility, even when we have done it and it's proven that we've done it even. And if there is no proof, then we get away with things. Yeah. Now, that is not the case with God. No. You, you always do not get away with anything with God. Nothing. Not a single thing can be gotten away with with God's laws. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that, if we now go back to this question, yes. we can then start analysing the real uh, impact of the question, I suppose you could say. Yes. So let's go back over the question yep. and then analyse what we've just said yes. with the help of that question now. So Sandra asks, if a person knows something to be bad and they know that there will be consequences for doing it mm -hmm. and they choose to do it anyway, thinking that since they know about the law of repentance and forgiveness, they can... Can, can we just analyse it step by step? Sure. Just the first part of that, if you just say yeah. the first part of it again. If a person knows something to be bad... Yes. Now, I would suggest that if they know something to be bad, fully know it to be bad, they, the next part of the question is null and void. So what's the next part of the question? And they know that there will be consequences for doing it. Exactly. If you know it's bad and you know there's consequences for doing something, then and you truly know what those consequences are, then why would you ever choose to do it? 
<laughs> now, I suggest that the majority of people who make this kind of decision, knowing something is bad and, ha and thinking they know the consequences, do not properly know the consequences. Because so, if, if you understood the consequences of breaking God's soul-based laws, you would never engage the purposeful breaking of a single one of them, mm -hmm. ever. I agree. Because the penalties are so, like, they are so immovable and often so great that you would never, ever decide to break them if you really knew their full consequence. So let's, let's, um, I can only come up with really shallow examples. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's because I'm trying to make it simple. Uh, if, say, you're talking about knowing something is bad and then the extent of how bad it is from, or the extent of the yep. consequences. So I feel so, what happens for most people yep. is they, they have a feeling that something is bad, right? But to them, it's only bad from a moral or guilt-based perspective. They don't actually know the full consequences from God's perspective of breaking that particular law or doing that particular bad thing. Yeah. They only know what they assume they know about yes. that particular thing. Yeah. So in my very rudimentary example, yeah. uh, a woman who is, or a man, struggling with weight gain. Yes. And they say, I really, really just want to go and eat that whole box of crackers or whatever. Yeah. Um, I know it's going to be bad for me. In other words, I'll put on more weight. Thinking it's all about just putting on more weight. Yeah. But And if you use even Sandra's question, but later on I'll just go on a diet or exercise madly yeah. and mitigate the consequence. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to go and do the bad thing, yeah. thinking that he or she understands that there's just one consequence. One, consequence. one bad consequence. When in fact, the, even the intention, the lack of love of self, all of these things. Well, yeah, if you talk about the intention, the lack of love of self, the addiction involved and so forth, there's a whole heap of soul-based consequences, all of which from God's perspective have all just been broken. Yeah. Then there's also, there's a whole heap of physical consequences that the person hasn't measured. Yes. And those kind of consequences are heart disease, you know, all, so all sorts of uh, body-based illnesses, yes. which are caused through eating food that is not good for you. That's not based around the, the circumference of their waist or whatever. No, it's, but it's of course it's proportional to the <laughs> circumference yes. of their waist in many cases. It is. <laughs> but um, they're thinking only about how they're going to fit into their <coughs> genes when Correct. in fact... They're, they're only interested in the physical appearance penalty. Yeah. They're not interested in all the other physical penalties or any of the soul-based penalties. Yeah. They're only interested in the physical penalty, which they observe, yeah. right? And then they go, oh, well, I observed that penalty, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. And I'll mitigate the, the problem by afterwards, going somehow. on an extreme diet. Afterwards. Maybe, maybe. Or whatever. Yeah. That's what oh, they, they, similar to Sandra's question, if I think, well, I'll just repent later, it'll be okay if I go ahead and do this. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of people, you know, get, have to, it usually has to get to some kind of extreme thing later before they finish up stopping their action yes. and taking positive steps, steps to stop their action. But, and, and so quite often all of this is our internal reasoning to justify our breaking of laws, our mm -hmm. unloving behaviour, mm -hmm. our sin. It's, mm -hmm. our, it's our internal reasoning to, to, to sin. Yeah. And most people have a justified internal reason to sin. Mm -hmm. and, and the more it's related to a moral or ethical issue, the higher the justifications generally. Yeah. Because, because we don't see the immediate results on our body and we don't feel the immediate penalty from a legal perspective. Mm -hmm. We're usually justifying those particular sins to a much higher degree. And unfortunately, what that means is we're justifying sins that have large penalties from God's perspective to a much higher degree yes. than we are justifying sins that have very low perspe uh, perspective, yeah. uh, low penalties from God's perspective. <laughs> yeah, and this is what you mean when you say, "Look, you were speaking about when someone knows something to be bad and they know there will be consequences in doing it." What you're basically saying is, someone can know something is bad, but they can still be avoiding the full view of all the consequences. Well, they are avoiding the full yeah. view of the, all the consequences if they chose to do something wrong. Because at the end of the day, if you had the full view, You'd you would you, no sane person with the full view 
would ever choose to do something wrong. That's why no celestial spirit ever chooses to do something <laughs> wrong, <laughs> because they are sane <laughs> yeah. and they know all of God's laws, and so they know it is pointless trying to do something wrong and trying to get away with it because that, that does not work. Yeah. And yeah. and they fully engage that from an emotional perspective too. They have a desire to do it, not just no because of the possible penalty involved. Well, that's right, isn't it? It's almost like you become grateful for the laws because you know that they're there to teach lessons in love. Yes, that's a part of coming to understand the law properly, isn't it? And not only that, part of coming to understand the law properly is that understanding that all of our pain and suffering, and which includes all of our emotional pain and suffering, so in other words, all of our unhappiness, is caused by a breaking of the law is caused by sin. Yeah. It's caused by breaking the law. Mm -hmm. So you would never, if you were sane, and, and the majority of the human race is not sane, <laughs> but if you were sane and you had a full view of every single law that is the possibility to break mm -hmm. and, and the penalties of such laws upon your soul in particular, but also upon your spirit and physical bodies, you would never choose to engage any sin purposefully, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. Ever. Yeah. So, so I'm suggesting even the question is a little flawed because it presumes that, that you can know fully the extent of the sin or the, or the penalties of the sin and still go ahead and sin. The reality is when you know fully the penalties of the sin, you will never go ahead and sin. Yeah. And, and it's an insane person who would ever do it. <laughs> <laughs> so the reality is most people on earth do not know. Yeah. Even if they know one or two of the consequences, like the example you raised with the you know, person who's fat deciding they're going to eat a bit more mm -hmm. and they'll pay the penalty of getting fatter, mm -hmm. not realising that there's a whole heap of other physical, emotional and spiritual penalties on their soul. And, you know, that particular person is not really properly analysing the situation at all. Yeah. 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 They're, they're basically insane. <laughs> 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 All right, so I want to ask. Well, from God's perspective, of course, that's the case. <laughs> the, you, yeah. you, it, it is. It is the um, height of, um, yeah, m intellectual instability to to decide to to en to engage a process that only results in further self destruction. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we call that on Earth when it's severe. We we put a person who does that on Earth in an asylum, or or in some kind of you know mental health program in order to correct their behavior, not realizing that for the majority of us, from God's perspective, we are engaging this behavior every single moment, of, almost yeah. of every single day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I, ha I want to, you made some really important points in sure. what you were just saying, and I want to clarify a couple of things so that they're really clear. Yeah. Basically, you sa you're saying that sin is created when we break the law when we act in disharmony with the law. Is that what you said? No, so, no, I said even the intention to break the law is a sin in itself. Yes, but you, you made the correlation between sin and law. Yes. So if we were acting in complete harmony with all of God's laws, from a soul perspective in terms of our intentions, desires and our actions, we there would not no be sin. sinning. Yeah, there's yep. no sin. Yeah, that's an important point, I think. And, and most people in the human race believe that's not possible. Yeah. So this is another problem. Yes. <laughs> because there's this, there's this belief on earth that goes something along the lines, oh, we're just human. We all make, you know, what it's we call nature. mistakes, but yeah. they're not mistakes of knowledge or anything. They're purposeful choices <laughs> to, to do an unloving act, right, yeah. many times. But we call them mistakes afterwards, right? And we all justify or have a tendency to justify these things as mistakes because it's a part of human nature. It is not a part of human nature. Mm -hmm. God did not control, c create the first human parents to have this as a part of their nature. Mm -hmm. God created the possibility only by giving us the free will. We, humankind, are the ones who created sin in reality. Yeah. And we, humankind, are going to be the ones who need to destroy it if we're ever going to become perfect. Mm -hmm. And God's laws are there to guide us to that point. They're always operating every minute, every yes. second to attempt 
to assist us back to that perfected place. Yes, so God's laws are redemptive. Yes. They are always trying to redeem us from our sin. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, if we understand that all of God's laws are redemptive, we would see the loving purpose of every single one of them. Mm -hmm. And every single law, the physical right the way through to the soul-based laws, the, the laws that are the highest laws of the universe, are all redemptive upon the human soul, you know, have redemptive actions upon the human soul to bring us to a state of perfection, yeah. to bring us back to the state that we lost because we chose to. Chose to sin. Yeah. Because we chose to sin. Yeah. yeah. And, okay, a couple of other clarifiers from what you said earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about how we often... Well, in our intro, we talked about the conscience, the fact that we have inside of us a conscience. And most of us, that is not uh, removed from us during our childhood experiences. We have some sense of what's good, bad, right, wrong. Can I define the conscience? Yes. Yeah. So the conscience uh, forms two parts in, uh, in, in its operation. Firstly, every single person on this planet is assigned a guide who is in a certain condition of love. That particular guide, whether we are in the condition of love or not, will attempt to communicate to us when we are doing something that's out of harmony with love. So that's the first part of our conscience. Mm -hmm. So we don't even have to be in a good condition to actually have a conscious based thought. Mm -hmm. The thought comes from a person external to us helping us see that we're actually taking an action that's out of harmony with love. Yeah. So that's number one. Yeah. Number two is we have a natural, because where there is a natural desire for perfection in the human race, uh, uh, unwittingly, most of the human, uh, of humankind don't believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they, believe in a, they believe in this, con in this other concept, this concept that, you know, God created us imperfect and we're all sinners. That's the con concept generally that's touted. But the reality is God created us perfect and there is an inbuilt human desire to be perfect. Mm -hmm. so, so this forms, it also forms part of the conscience. Yeah. And this particular part of us, usually in the beginning, whenever we're about to sin, uh, screams at us generally. Yeah. And, and it just depends on how much we suppress those inner, yeah. inner workings, along with suppressing the communication that comes from a spirit who's in a loving condition, mm -hmm. as to how much we will ignore this voice. Yeah. And the voice can be a voice of that's outside, coming from outside of mm -hmm. us, or an inner voice which is presented to us because of this, uh, it, this underlying desire that all humankind has to be perfect at some mm -hmm. point. And you're talking about the conscience being affected by uh, suppression of emotion, which disconnects us from guides and also from this inbuilt desire to be perfect. Well, I think it disconnects and us from the inbuilt desire to be perfect, but it mm -hmm. certainly doesn't connect us from our guides. Our guides still have the ability to communicate with us. Yep. And so quite often, even though we might have completely suppressed emotionally this inside desire to be perfect and we don't even believe in it anymore, we still have conscience thoughts being dropped into our mind from our guide, guide. telling us, no, you're doing something out yeah. of harmony of love now. This is hurting someone. This is hurting someone or yeah. hurting yourself. Yeah. Don't you think you should make a different choice? Yeah. And, <laughs> and of course, whether we hear that is certainly dependent upon a number of factors of how much we want to go ahead and do the wrong thing. Yes, how much we're justifying the unloving use of our will. Yes. Uh, because then there's the third factor where some of us have been taught things, the errors about love, where we believe that uh, self-sacrifice, for example, is a loving, is a loving quality. Mm -hmm. And this is a sin from God's perspective, if it's done it uh, yep. in the way that it's taught by majority of earth. Um, so in that case, there are uh, situations where sin is almost a, like a surprise when we learn about it, would you say? No, I don't think so, because in the example you gave, if we, which was basically, if you summarise the example, it's... The, are you talking about the fat person or the... No, no, the, the thing you've just said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> about when we, we're growing up and we're taught error-based ideas about love. Yes. So there can be the idea that if I take this action, it's loving, when in fact, from God's perspective, it's Yeah, not. I don't believe that at all. Yep. And the reason why I don't believe that at all is because there is this other part of ourselves, which is the ethical part of ourselves saying, would I like that being done to me 
what I'm, what I would like what I'm doing to somebody else being done to me. Mm. Now, to, to not have that ethical part of ourselves operational, we have to have a, a, an air of superiority over the other. In other words, we have to believe that we're more, in- we're more important than somebody else. Yeah. And, and therefore, what we do to them doesn't matter as much as what they do to us, mm. right? Now, my, my feeling is that the majority of problems come from that, come from the superiority feeling, which we've talked about right from the beginning of this discussion, because that's the feeling that the majority of parents inculcate in their children, saying, you are my children, that makes you more important than anybody else, and you can get away with certain things as long as you do certain things. Yeah, yeah. You can get away with certain things. Um, and, and so that air of superiority, the air of arrogance, the air of uh, the unequality, I am better than you, the feeling that I am better than anybody that's not my family and is, is, is established within me. And that often is the main motivating force that causes us to go ahead and sin without the consideration of ethics. So you're basically saying there is no time when we sin, when we don't actually know we're doing something wrong. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And you we would can say claim that, that's the case. Yes. We can claim that there's, there's always things we don't know. But, but the law of compensation is acting upon us anyway, isn't it? Yeah. If we, like, sorry. Yeah. If, if we allowed God's laws and we noticed God's laws acting even upon our body, we would notice we're getting older, we're getting sicker, we, you know, we get diseases, we get sicknesses. There's got to be something wrong. There's got to be something mm. going wrong. And if we understood that particular thing, we understand that with physical things. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if we know that if we ram one car into another car, that there's, and there's people in both cars, that, that, that depending on the speed of impact is going to cause some probably some damage both to the cars and the people, right? Yeah. We, know, we know that will occur, yeah. right? But unfortunately, we don't observe it from a, from a compensatory effect. We, we, what we take as nature which is growing old, dying, getting sick, dying, you know, having diseases, dying, having accidents, dying. <laughs> we call that nature, right? We yeah. call that, the, that's not God's opinion of nature. That's human creation in full bloom. That's our choice to sin being acted out and demonstrated fully to us. Mm-hmm. And, and if we wish to change, we're going to have to change some of those things. Mm-hmm. What is the problem, though, is we're justifying sin, saying it's human nature. So we're already going wrong there. We're already saying that if we go and do some of these things that are out of harmony with love, that, that we'll get away with it at some point. And, and the, if we look at the human race, you can see we're not getting away with anything. No. All, all, all that is done and har- all the harm that is caused all has a penalty upon ourselves or other people. Every, a lot of people, most people on the planet are unhappy. Mm-hmm. And those that think they're happy are just in addiction. It's getting mm-hmm. their addictions met to be happy. Yeah. And as soon as one of those addictions get taken away from them, they're screaming blue murder. Yeah. So the reality is that, the, that, that if we were truly noticing what was going on in our world, uh, we would see quite clearly that there must be something wrong with what we're doing. Mm. So what you're saying is there is a decision there's a will-based decision on the part of every human being yes. to ignore sin. Yes. Because God's laws are all there attempting to make us aware yes. every minute of every day. And so there is a conscious, yes. a, a willful attempt to remain unaware of sin and its consequences. Yes. And even if we become aware or we, we feel that, oh, I'm doing something wrong feeling, often there's still the will-based choice to ignore the, the brevity of the, of the um, extent, extent the, of, the, of the consequences. Consequence. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and I think, I think it's important to state here that there are certain people in the world who do enter the spirit world, you know, they've passed from this earth and enter the spirit world, who have not engaged sin. Uh, very much at all, mm-hmm. but most often they've been severely controlled by other people for the majority, if not all, of their life. So, so you know, the average person in the West can't say that. No, <laughs> but but there are people who do pass, who have had a huge amount of control from other people externally, and and in the extreme circumstances, you could say somebody who's in prison from the time they're born to the time they're dead. Yeah. you know, sort of meets that kind of category where they, they have complete restrictions placed upon their will, mm. complete restrictions placed upon what, they, what they're able to do and carry out. 
And as a result, much of what they finish up doing obviously can only be attributed to other people's actions. So, for example, there's a lot of child slavery that still happens on the earth, child yes. prostitution, where children are sold into these very yes. extreme and dramatic circumstances where they're completely controlled from yes. a young age. Yes. And, um, and, and it applies more to women than men too. There are many more women on this earth who are in severely restricted circumstances and situations not under their own control. Mm. And if they tried to get out of such circumstances, they would usually be severely punished or killed. Mm. And these particular people are far less uh, responsible for the decisions that they make out of harmony with love than the people who are forcing those decisions upon them. Upon them. Yeah. Yeah. And Mind you, is... they still take decisions out of harmony with love, yeah. even as adults, fully knowing that they wouldn't like those particular things done to themselves. Yes, and so, that so. They, there is a sin involved in that. Of course, so, and you can't get away with any of God's laws, <laughs> including that intention. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, yeah, so this is why men generally pass over into the spirit world in worse condition than women if they're not in the Western world. Mm -hmm. In the Western world, women and men often pass over in similar conditions and sometimes women uh, pass in a worse condition because of the tendency to engage abortion, mm. which obviously from God's perspective is murder. Yeah. So these particular problems cause many women to pass in much worse condition than, mm. than what they would originally expect. Yeah. And this is a huge issue in the West, isn't it? Because we gave this small example of one child being sold into prostitution or slavery. Mm. But actually, uh, in developed countries, we are, our economies, our societies, our, our um, politics is all engaged in taking from other people, which, yes. which harms our soul condition because yes, our intention is behind that yes yeah so so the reality is people in the west are in usually far worse condition from god's perspective than people in other nations and as a result that's why we're doing most of our work we're trying yes. to help firstly people in the west we're trying to help the people who are have abused other nations <laughs> more than we can help the abusers that the, the abused people at this yeah. point because you can help abuse people, but while the abuse, abusing continues, mm. then, then it's very, very difficult to help people who are being abused. Yeah. And, and, and people in the West have no real understanding at this point how much their lifestyle, their choices, their situation, their demands, their addictions impact upon the rest of the world. And this is what you're saying about being willfully ignorant of the consequences of the sin. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So in the West in particular, we are willfully ignorant of the consequences of sin. And in fact, what we do is we impose the consequences of our sin upon others in less fortunate circumstances. We blame them and... Yeah, it's, not, it's very similar to a murderer mm -hmm. blaming another person for the murder and that other person going to jail for their murder. Yeah. It's, that's what we frequently do. And obviously there's consequences from a moral perspective for that sin too. Yeah. Yeah. having somebody else be blamed or pay the consequences for our particular choices. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> we got this far in the question. Yeah. If a person knows something to be bad and that they and they know that there will be consequences for doing it. So in other words now we've we've said it, for that particular section if you really knew the, all the consequences and you had the full picture you definitely wouldn't do that. <laughs> but we also said the majority of the time you do know when something is bad. Of course, yeah. but you don't know the full consequences. You only have a, have a conscience thought, which is often just your guide telling you that, no, no, that's not a good idea, mate. <laughs> no, yeah, that's yeah, bad. Yeah. And, um, but, but we have a whole heap of internal justifications for doing bad things. And so because we don't have the full picture and we don't see the soul degradation occurring in the moment, we decide to go ahead and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next part of the question. Mm -hmm. And they choose to do it anyway, mm -hmm. thinking that since they know about the law of repentance and forgiveness, that they can engage that law to get rid of the consequences. Now, they don't know the law of repentance and forgiveness if they chose to do that, because the law of repentance and forgiveness doesn't allow you to engage the law of repentance and forgiveness in, a, in an insincere manner. Yes. <laughs> and part of the sincere manner to repenting is realising that you actually made the choice on purpose yeah. to do something wrong. So, so if they fully understood the law of repentance, they would never ever choose <laughs> <laughs> to take an action 
I, to, and then choose to, to take the action thinking that they can repent for it afterwards. Yeah. Well, and, and in fact, there's a double sin, isn't there? Oh, of there's, course. There's a, f- a much there's a f- more severe sin. Actually. Feeling that, look, I know something's bad, I'll get, but I'll get away with it by engaging this other law. That This feeling of wanting to get away with it is a huge sin. This is the problem. And it's actually an abuse of the loving, it's an attempt to abuse the loving laws that God has actually put in place to assist us to yes. assist us and guide us. And there are huge soul-based penalties yeah. Ba- yeah. based upon that particular attempt yeah. as an intention. Yeah. So, yeah, that's very, very dangerous thinking. Very dangerous thinking. Yes, <laughs> yes. And it sort of defies logic, really. Well, it also implies that, again, the questioner, who, what's the lady who's... Sandra. Sandra. What's her, has she got a last name? She does, but I don't know how to pronounce oh, it. Okay. I think it's Sai, right. T-S-A-I. T-S-A-I. Yeah. Well, Sandra, even just the thought of these particular questions has in itself some indications that you are a person who desires to get away with the results of law. You mm-hmm. want to get away with, with paying the penalty. Yeah. Because it's very, very uh, rare... Um, in fact, it's a very so it's a common thing on the planet that mm. most people do have mm. that thought that they can get away with penalties, and they'll be able to somehow manipulate God into getting away with the penalty, and they somehow believe that the law of repentance is is the way that you're going to manipulate God. Yeah, and the reality is it's not going to work. Yeah, because they yeah it you can't actually engage the law of repentance to get rid of the consequences of, you, of a purposeful action taken when and when you've made the decision right at the beginning to engage the law of repentance before you took that action. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, can't do it. You can't do it. And in fact, you'll find that you'll spend a long time in the hills if you choose to do something like this. <laughs> yeah. And as you said, the very feeling itself is displaying quite a, a, an injury. The yes. desire, The feeling that, look, I'll do the bad thing and then I'll pay, I'll use a law to overcome the law of compensatory effect. Yeah, well, there's a number of degrees to this, isn't there? Yeah. There's, there's I'll do the bad thing and I'll pay the consequence. Now, a yeah. lot of people have that. Yes. And that, and I feel that's a more uh, stable honest. way of an honest <laughs> yeah. way of thinking. Although most people, I feel quite strongly that most people have no understanding of the full consequence because yeah. if they did, they would never choose to do it. Yeah. But it makes, it's more, it's taking more responsibility yes. for the particular action. Now, um, but the other problem is obviously purposeful, trying to engage one of God's laws into, in, in order to mitigate the other one is not a act of sincerity. So you are all already insincere, therefore you're not engaging the law. The mm. law of repentance can only be engaged with sincerity. Yeah. And, and God measures the sincerity, not you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, the fact is that a person who tries to engage the law without sincerity is not going to be able to engage the law. Yeah, and repentance, engaging with repentance, as we're going to talk about in our assistance groups, is not just a, it's not just a simple, uh, I'll just remove the cause from me of why I did that thing. There's a lot of work involved in feeling the pain. Well, there's a whole process. Uh, you know, we had a, we, we talked a few weeks ago, and I think it's now up on the net, uh, that Paget message that about is from sin. myself about yep. sin. And, and that's a very important thing. If we choose to engage uh, to the sin um, and then expect to get away with it afterwards through either you know, paying the penalty or by engaging the law of repentance, then we have not had an awakening to the sin. To the sin. And if we do not have an awakening to the sin, none of God's love can flow and all of the laws of repentance and forgiveness are dependent upon God's love flowing. So it's actually impossible for you to engage a law of repentance or forgiveness if God's love isn't flowing. Mm-hmm. And under those circumstances, the law of compensation kicks into effect. Yeah. And, and if you understood the purposeful action taken and the cause in terms of the, and what it results in, that what you will reap as a result of what yeah. you sowed with regard to a purposeful action, you would never choose to do such a thing. No. And you would certainly, if you understood properly, the difference between the law of repentance and the law of compensation, you would definitely never choose to engage something that required you to engage the law of compensation either. No. Because the law of repentance is a far higher law with far better benefits. Mm. And so, but it requires sincere heart, a heartfelt sincerity. Yeah. And most people on earth 
have no idea what a heartfelt sincerity is yeah. with, with regard to most things. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Mm. And the compensatory effect is going to be compound. It's going to be greater as well, Much isn't greater. it? Because you're actively saying, I'm going to sin and fix it up later yeah. and remove and my consequences. And in fact, the consequences are going to be even greater because of that desire. It's not only that, the majority of the time, we don't realise that our sins cause damage to other people too. Mm. Now, how are you going to remove from yourself the effects of your, your damage that you've created to the other person? And that, now, honestly, you, you're really biting off a terrible, terrible thing for your soul if you choose to do something like this. Yeah. And, and this is why I feel it's very, very important for humankind to properly understand God's laws. Because if you, if you can properly understand God's laws, then there's a much, much higher likelihood you would never want to break them. Mm. And, and this is why in our assistance groups, we're spending two full weeks on both understanding God's laws and Engage. engaging God's laws. And then we've got another two full weeks on sin, understanding sin and removing the, the, the sin itself. Uh, because, so half of our entire program is dedicated towards these particular subjects. Mm. And the reason why is because we cannot have an awakening to sin without understanding law or understanding the um, consequences of our, of our actions upon not only ourselves, but also upon others. Yeah. 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 Okay. So let's go back to the question as we've answered yep. it so far. Yep. If a person knows something to be bad, and they know that there will be consequences for doing it. <laughs> and they choose to do it anyway, thinking that since they know about the law of repentance and forgiveness, that they can engage that law to get rid of the consequences. Will they have the same amount of difficulty in being able to repent for that sin as someone that did it, but not with the intention of getting away with it by engaging the law of repentance and forgiveness. <laughs> and I think we've answered that. I think we've pretty much it answered it now. It is going to be harder. It's going to be much, much harder. Yeah. Not just harder. Yeah. Much, harder. much harder. And also they've proven that they do not understand the law of forgiveness and repentance, mm -hmm. in fact. Mm -hmm. so, so they may think they do. And this is part of the problem that the human race has too, is we often think intellectually that we understand something but if we had a true soul-based understanding we would definitely not engage the entire process right from the beginning yeah right and so this kind of question is very good because it demonstrates how we can have so many flawed ways of thinking and then we impose these flawed ways of thinking upon our decisions without knowing the full picture. Mm -hmm. And then we make a whole heap of decisions, hoping to get away with the consequences of such decisions, mm -hmm. only to find in the end that our end condition is much, much worse than we could ever imagine. Yeah. And this is why the majority of people who pass from this earth arrive in the spirit world in the hells, many and large number in the depths of hell, without any understanding whatsoever about how they got there yeah. and with and with the full desire to continue breaking God's laws and to continue sinning. And, and it's a terrible thing to, to do that. I, I feel that what we are going to teach in our assistance groups regarding law and, and sin, every child from, you know, from the time they're born should be taught these kind of principles. I agree, in and, school. And not as, it's not as a threat. It's, it's just the law. It's like the law of gravity. It should be taught in the same way as the law of gravity, gravity is taught. Mm -hmm. It should be taught the same way the law of aerodynamics is taught. It should be taught as a scientific principle, something that you will not ever be able to get away with your entire life. And so what you've got to learn to do is understand the law and engage it in a positive manner. Yeah. 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 And as you said, not like a threat. My strong feeling is if we were taught about God's laws, uh, the full truth about God's laws, then we would grow up with the feeling that actually, wow, some dude created this whole bunch of laws for me to learn about myself and learn about how to love. Thanks so much. This is a gift. Now I know I've got immediate feedback and I know how to do everything. And all I've got to do is just open up, feel, respond, 
to But it even gets better than that, doesn't it? Like in the end, we can have a connection even with the person who created those laws. And that person can tell us every single moment that we're attempting to even break any of these laws. And and that person can even demonstrate to us the laws that we don't even understand yet. Yeah. If we allow the communication through love to continue. If we engage with these laws, that's the potentiality. So So. it's not, and this is what... um, what I wrote in our notes was that if we really understood God's laws, we would never rebel against them because no. they're gifts to us and they're actually um, designed to keep love and happiness. Yes. If everyone complied with God's laws, love and happiness would happen. This is why I say Peace. quite bluntly that it's an insane person who yes. chooses to break God's laws. Like you, it's just, you're just insane mm-hmm. because because of all laws in the universe, God's laws are immovable. They are non-negotiable. They all have penalties. And the, wor- the more the law is engaging a soul-based thing of morals or ethics, the worse the penalty. <laughs> yeah. so, so, you know, physical, breaking a physical law is actually better from God's perspective than breaking a spirit or a, a natural love or a divine love-based law, a soul-based law. Mm-hmm. And, and so you, you're crazy if you choose to do this. Yeah. Once you know the truth, if you really knew it, you would be crazy to take this kind of action. Yeah. Literally crazy, out of your mind, crazy. Yeah. Right? And, so, and so what I'm suggesting to people is that is the main reason why we take, from God's perspective, out of your mind crazy <laughs> decisions and we act upon them is because we do not understand the truth. Mm. And this is why the truth is so important. Yeah. If we understood the full truth about law yeah. and we understood the full truth about sin, we would never, under any circumstances, choose to sin, hoping to engage some kind of law, the, some law in order to mitigate the circumstances afterwards. Because such a thing, from God's perspective, is completely impossible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we'd never go for short-term avoidance of fear because we would know that in the long term that's going to have so many negative consequences upon us, upon our environment, upon Wouldn't our relationship. you say short-term avoidance of fear, though? I don't uh, understand Engaging an addiction, sorry. We'd never yeah. avoid a, a, engage an addiction to avoid a fear. To avoid, but we don't ex- engage addictions to avoid fears. Generally, this is a, this go is ahead. another thing that many people have heard divine truth continue to think. We engage addictions because we want to. Because it's our will based. Because it's our will, our yeah. desire to. We think we're going to benefit from it yeah. and we desire it. We're like, so, so not all addictions are created by fear. A lot of our addictions no. are created by an air of superiority, beliefs of our own entitlement yeah. and, and other addictions, which are very, very damaging addictions. And, and so we can't just use the term fear uh, you know, people making decisions in fear as the reason why they make the decisions. Because, because actually, decisions made in fear of, uh, are much less common than decisions made because of f- feeling of superiority, arrogance, and other very negative uh, injuries that have been caused in our childhood by our parents believing that we are superior to other people mm. and we're better than them, and we therefore sh- should feel that the other people are less equal than we are. Mm. Yeah. And so at the first sign where we suddenly, like we start to have a conscience feeling about our, our acting and taking power over others, we would never do that if we fully understood the law. We'd go, whoa, I've got an issue here. I've got to stop this action because it's going to harm me and everyone else if I continue in it. No, see, we've got to even look at the difference. It harms everyone else and me. Yes. Not the other way around. Me, of course, and it, like yeah. see, see, even the saying "me and everyone else" is is already we've already got the truth about sin out of whack. The reality is, sin harms everyone else, and then me as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, I feel pretty sensitive to the everyone else sometimes, but not so much to the me. Well, true, but but the you know the average person doesn't. The average person is opposite to that. The average person believes. They're not harming other people. When if the other person did exactly the same thing as they've chosen to do, mm. they they put towards them, mm. they would personally feel very you know, mm. hurt. Mm. And the you know I feel we need to make sure that everything is based on equality. You know, yeah. and and 
I feel the majority of people, even in their analysis, are firstly only concerned about their own happiness. And that is a huge problem on this planet. Mm. That is actually one of the major reasons why many choose to sin, because mm. they're only interested in their own welfare and not interested in anyone else's. Yeah. If you were interested in somebody else's welfare, you would never feed their addictions. You would never do what they want when you know it's out of harmony with God's laws. You would never act upon your own fear and you would never act upon any of your own feelings of superiority or any other feeling, actually. So, so again, I feel if you, if you accurately analysed any situation, you wouldn't choose to do these things. Yeah. Yeah. And if you really loved people, even if you didn't love yourself very much, if you really loved people, you would never even choose to do something that would harm another person. And if, if, you, if you had a viewpoint of equality inside of you, mm -hmm. because you would never do something to harm another person, you would also never do anything to harm yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so this is where I feel people have, have to learn a lot about law and, and consequence and, and learn to have a much bigger picture than what they current the, the earth viewpoint of law is very very limited yeah. and 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 also um the because we're so focused on the physical we're so focused on this is my body so i'm only worried about what happens to this body and not worried about anything else we're mm. so focused on the physical part of our of our living we forget the soul-based impact of what yeah. we do yeah. and yet it's the soul based impact of what we do which has the most detrimental effect not only upon our physical life but also on our life after we've passed and also upon the world around us of course yeah yeah, yeah. so so, there. so it makes no sense then to not discover the truth and how big every decision that we are uh, that we make is particularly when it comes to the impact it has on the soul of others, the soul of ourselves, the impact that it has on our future life, other people's future life, because mm -hmm. many of our personal decisions can harm another person's life for, for hundreds of years. Yeah. Um, and, and we have no idea many times how much we've harmed another person's life and how, how their decisions and choices have been terribly m manipulated by our desire to sin. Mm. And so, you know, I feel once we fully understand these particular impacts, we would have a very strong desire to be perfect. Yeah. And we would have a very strong desire to acknowledge all of God's laws and a very strong desire to live in harmony with them because we know that the happiness of others and the happiness of ourselves depends upon it. Yeah. 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 And I feel that once we fully understand that, we would also then never contemplate doing as you know Sandra, Sandra has questioned about yeah. which and I'm not suggesting she's doing it no uh, um, she's asked yeah. she's asked a very good question but um, we would never even contemplate that if we fully understood the full ramifications of even the question yes I suppose there's one other thing that I wanted to raise with you about this from the discussion and that is that um, there's a lot of people who still wish to deny their responsibility for understanding even the laws. Which is a sin in itself. Yes. Um, in other after words, they hear divine truth and they... Well, even before. Yes. Uh, yeah. So let's call it the sin of ignorance, the purposeful ignorance. Mm -hmm. there are the, there's, the hells of the spirit world are literally littered with people who on earth chose to, to not... To, to basically have no moral turpitude, mm. or, or is that what it's called? Um, no moral I, strength, no moral know. character, fortitude, you mean? no moral fortitude, yep. and 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 dis, and just decide to go along with the flow. Yep. And yep. and the hells of the spirit world. So I'm not talking the low. I'm saying the lower parts of the spirit world, mm -hmm. the first sphere, are full of people in torment, mm. emotional torment, who have who are in emotional torment only because. They chose to go along with the rest of the world on everything. Yeah. Right. So, so it's a terrible decision to make to to avoid your own responsibility. Mm. Now, sorry. Go on. And avoid the the knowledge of the consequences of your actions. Like we. Well, that's live... a part of avoiding your own responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We live in this age where the internet, you know, has taken over the world. Even people in Africa are starting to have the internet. Yep. 
so there's this information that is actually available to people all the time and one of Igor's favourite sayings is, you know, 90% of it's used for pornography. What's that about? <laughs> because we, we have the opportunity to, to actually learn about so many things. And yet what I see in Western society is that most people don't want to know. They don't want to know about the state of the environment. They don't want to know about people starving. They don't want to know about... And that's a purposeful choice. It's a purposeful choice. And, and it's a sin. It's a sin. It's a yeah. sin to not want to know. Yeah. It is a sin. Yeah. Um, God created us right from the beginning to want to know things. And, and every time we choose to not want to know, we are actually sinning. Yeah. So not wanting to know the truth, not wanting to know the effects of your decisions and outcomes, not wanting to know what's happening in the rest of the world, not wanting to know these kind of things are all sins. Mm. They, they are all a actions we're deciding to take out of harmony with love and they all have consequences on our own soul and the souls of others. Yeah. And this is why the earth can remain and people on the earth can remain in such a condition of sadness because most of us are avoiding any personal responsibility to make a change. Mm -hmm. And that's sad too. Yeah. You know, but, and that, that's the result of our sin. The result of our sin is the world gets to be in a mess mm -hmm. because we personally, individually, have chosen to ignore the truth about what's really going on in the world and, and what part we have played in its creation. Yeah, and I find it tragic because the more of that's ignored, the worse the situation becomes. Of course. And it's which is the consequence of the law. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God, see, God's laws are immovable. God's laws go are going to, the more we as humanity expect somebody to come along and rescue us, you know, Jesus or God to come along and rescue us, the more we expect that, the less we will take personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. The less we take personal responsibility, the law says there is a higher penalty. So that's going to result in more trouble, more strife, more pain, more suffering for all of humanity and ourselves. Yeah. So it makes no sense at all to live in ignorance. And, and in fact, we have a moral responsibility to no longer live in ignorance mm -hmm. of any matter. Yeah. You know, and particularly matters pertaining to the soul. Yeah. particularly matters pertaining to our happiness mm -hmm. you know so so sure if you want to live in ignorance to you know the law the laws of different countries that's fine but those laws some of which have been created with the help of spirits who had god's laws in mind some of which have been are just crazy laws you know yeah, that have yeah. been created to <laughs> to mitigate people making unloving choices on earth all the time yeah and um, but at the end of the day, if we fully understood God's laws, we wouldn't need these laws. We wouldn't need any human law at all. And we wouldn't even need a border or a boundary or a We wouldn't a need borders, passport boundaries, or... passports. Yeah. Uh, we, wouldn't need, we wouldn't need, you know, laws that govern the land, laws that govern finances, laws that govern... You know, we'd have roads too, by the way, because, pe see, people don't understand that even the fact that they're taxed is an indication that the average person doesn't want to pay mm -hmm. for what services they use because if we truly if we truly honored the law we would want to pay tax yeah right so we're, we're starting up some stuff coming up with companies with regard to god's way of love again mm -hmm. and and like i was asked do you want to make it non-profit no i don't <laughs> we, we're going to have, want to pay for roads and we want to pay for this and the government yeah. does a good thing by doing these things yes. no i don't want to pay have tax free yeah. i want to be able to pay tax if we're going to if we're going to use the services, we need to pay tax. <laughs> I, I agree. I feel that uh, we live in such affluence. Yeah. And if some of our... Well, the, the reality, though, is if all of us understood the law, we wouldn't even need to be taxed because we'd all be gifting money exactly. to the government to do these things. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it, like the entire economy of the world would change. The entire way the world operates will change. There would also, you know, there'd be no such thing as arms manufacture. Mm -hmm. what, what a stupid thing to do. Yeah. Like, like killing another person is a murder from God's perspective. It's one of the worst things you can do. You end up in the hells when you do it. Any person who is sane would never do it. Right. And any person who is sane would not create a device that allows another person to do it yeah. easily. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Now, understand with a knife, it's got multiple roles, right? <laughs> <laughs> but with a gun, there's, you know, I can't see anybody preparing their food with one. No. Aside from shooting an animal, which of course has its own penalties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see you producing a vegetable dish <laughs> with a gun. No. And, and this is the thing, is that we on the earth have done so many things out of harmony with love and we continue to choose 
and support so many things out of Harmony of Love. And if we were really sane, we would never choose to do them. And if, and if we understood the law, we certainly would never choose to do them. So, so I, you know, this is the problem, is that we need, we need to have a much better education with regard to sin, and we need to have a much better education when it comes to God's laws. Yeah. And the final point you really just made was that we need to take responsibility for the fact that we are being willfully ignorant of sin, and that incurs its own cost yes. penalty. Yes. Yeah. Every choice we make has either a positive effect on our life or a negative one. Every single choice we make that is out of harmony with love will, without fail, have a negative consequence in our life, whether we see the consequence immediately mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. And we personally need to have as much education as possible <coughs> to see that that is the truth. Yeah. yeah. I think it's pretty obvious, though. If you look at how humanity's pain and suffering has developed over thousands of years and continues to be in full swing even yeah. to today, this is a demonstration that humanity does not understand some very basic things about itself. Yeah. And, and therefore, we need a great deal of education in order to stop these particular things. Yeah. 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 So, so it's very, very important that we are well educated when it comes to God's laws, the real laws of the universe. Mm -hmm. And and the education when it comes to man laws, man's laws is almost immaterial in comparison. Like and yet the majority of people on earth are only concerned about breaking man's laws. Mm. They do not concern themselves about God's laws generally mm -hmm. at all. And then and then and only then uh, sorry, and then with man's laws, they only are concerned if they get caught. Yes. <laughs> Right. Which shows there's no character development really involved in exactly. honouring the law. Exactly. It's only to do with having the penalty imposed. And what we need to understand is that with God's laws, there is always a penalty imposed. Yep. You cannot avoid the penalty. Yep. And there are only a few laws, the highest possible laws of the universe, that can help you with you know, coping with the penalties. Mm -hmm. And one of those laws is the law of repentance. And yet that law requires a whole number of things, including the awakening to sin yeah. and the sincere desire that's developed in your heart to repent yeah. before it can be engaged. And you are definitely not going to engage it if you've chosen to break the law in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> Knowingly. Yes. Yes. You mentioned that everyone needs this education in God's laws. I just wanted to raise that God's been attempting to educate us in those laws since the moment of our since the moment of creation creation yeah. and our incarnation yes god's laws have been operating they're designed there to assist us with that knowledge yes and so it's not an excuse to say look i only just heard about it now because the entire universe is operating to make you aware of the laws and yes. the sin that is generated by acting in defiance of the laws yes yeah. and not only the entire universe we also have spirit helpers who are also been trying to do it. So we've got people who actual have also people. been actual yeah, people yeah. who have also been attempting to educate us too. Yeah. And so it's not like um, you know we're blindly going around trying to discover new laws. The reality is, and I find this remarkable. The reality is that when it comes to physical things, we usually see cause and effect quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, for example, if a person holds their hand over a hot flame, their skin starts burning. It's very, very painful. And, and so they remove their hand. Mm. Right. The, the, the cause of the burn was the flame. We immediately make that assumption, even from a very ch uh, young child, and we never engage it purposefully again, generally. Mm. So we never again put our hand over a flame yeah. like we did that first time when we got burnt. Mm -hmm. It's we certainly never do it expecting that it not to burn. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, so this, is a, this is how all of God's laws are taught to us. But, but what we do, with the, so, we, so we see this relationship between mm -hmm. terrible heat, you know, a large amount of heat and burning of our skin. Yeah. We see the relationship. We immediately impose that. We allow that law to be imposed upon us. We feel its consequences. We choose, because we're sane, we choose to not engage that action again because we know the consequences will be painful yeah right? and yet we don't assume the same thing applies to the pain in the world 
In other words, we don't assume that all the pain and suffering in the world is because we must be collectively breaking a whole heap of laws that cause us pain and suffering. Yeah. Right. So, so what I find quite remarkable is we are, we are perfectly engaged with law on a physical level, mm -hmm. while at the same time, completely ignorant by choice of all the laws on a moral and spiritual level yeah. and, and soul based level. This is an indication of how purposeful our action is yeah. to ignore law. You see, any person who is in their right mind would see that if a physical law applies where there is, if you break it and you, there's pain and you have to recover from it, mm -hmm. then it obviously makes sense that there are the pain and suffering on the planet must be caused by breaking a whole heap of laws that we've not yet discovered. Yeah. It makes it's sense logical. logically. And what I'm saying is that majority of people for centuries, for millennia, have ignored that logical reasoning and that logical argument. Yeah. And, and how can we collectively, 7.2 billion people, ignore a logical argument? <laughs> Only by being in huge amounts of denial. Yeah. Only by doing that. Willful denial. Willful denial. Yeah. Because, because otherwise you would think of all those 7.2 million people, at least one of us would come up with the <laughs> idea that maybe... Well, you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, but, but maybe there's a problem here. Yeah. You know, maybe this relationship that we see physically, which is if I break the law, there's a consequence and it's mm -hmm. painful, mm -hmm. also applies to other laws that I've not yet discovered. Yeah. And, and it makes complete logical sense if you think about it. And yet no one on the planet seems to want to engage the possibility. And, and this is why, well, very few people you know, want to engage the possibility. And we certainly do not engage the possibility collectively as nations or mm. as a whole world. Yeah. And yet we need to. Yeah. And so what I'm suggesting is that there's a huge amount of education that has to occur with regard to law and sin. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge amount of education that needs to transcend the barrier between the physical explanation of the law and the spiritual and soul-based explanation of the law there's a, and and we need to see we need to conceive the relationship between physical things which are teaching us physical properties of laws and therefore god teaching us things about things that we cannot yet see yeah. but which obviously must still act in the same manner because there is pain yes yeah. There's a huge amount of pain and suffering on the planet. Therefore, it makes sense that we must be breaking some laws by choice yeah. that we don't wish to acknowledge, yeah. right? That we wish to remain in denial of. Mm. Because, it, because it, if, if the whole planet decided, oh, let's light a fire and all jump in, uh, everyone would think we're all nutters, right? <laughs> but, but this is what we're doing emotionally and spiritually. Yeah. We light all of these terrible, terribly destructive fires spiritually and emotionally mm. we jump into it expecting ourselves to not experience pain in the end yeah. and this is why we need to come to terms with god's laws and it's very important to learn god's laws in my life the most of my most of my personal effort has been engaged in finding out more of god's laws mm. god's laws are the framework of the universe all physical spiritual and soul-based matter lives within the framework of these laws. Mm. If you understand them, your life will increase in terms of its happiness and its um, achievements far greater than understanding any other thing on this planet or in the universe. So it makes a lot of sense for us to engage this process with a very active desire to, to fully understand everything that God's got to teach us about law. Yeah, mm. yeah. Excellent. Well, that was a great discussion, mm. I feel, about law itself mm. and rebellion. Yes. And um, Sandra, I'm sure that's given Sandra some things to ha and have. And whoever look at. reads the forum uh, <laughs> asking <laughs> yeah. with her question. I think it's yeah. a wonderful question to ask. Yes. These are the kinds of questions to me that are far more important than the majority of questions people ask yep. because they have a, a, a major huge impact on our life, mm -hmm. our, our life now yeah. in terms of our happiness, our peace and our security, but also our life after we've passed in mm -hmm. the spirit world. We can completely avoid the hells of the spirit world if we engage law now. Mm. We can completely avoid unhappiness in the spirit world if we engage law now. Yeah. And so this is why it, it really is something that needs to be an imperative 
That's yeah. something that we feel, you know, a huge personal desire to do mm. because it has so many positive benefits, not only to the world we're living in right now, but to our, to our and everyone else's who, who are impacted by our life future. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of our vision, isn't it? That, it, that individuals decide that they're going to act in harmony with these laws. One by one, they make that individual personal decision until there is no more pain and suffering yes. left on the world or in the spirit world. Yes. Because people have chosen that, um, that, that they want to live in harmony with all of God's laws. Yes, and we see, we see people have heard divine truth five years, six years, seven years ago, who were still eating meat, still breaking laws, still, still taking drugs still breaking laws, still drinking, still breaking laws, still harming other people, still breaking laws, still harming their children, still breaking laws. You know, purposeful choice, even after hearing the truth, yeah. means that there is no sincerity mm. to discover or have an awakening to the sin. Yeah. And therefore, and therefore there will be no repentance or for, and there will be no forgiveness from God entering that person. They cannot have a relationship with God without going through the process of choosing, having an awakening, having an awakening to sin mm -hmm. and then choosing through their own choice to repent for it, yeah. but also choosing to no longer engage that sin. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it's such an essential part of our understanding of God's truth. And, and there can be no alleviation of suffering for that individual or, no. as you mentioned, very importantly, for the world around us. Until and we engage. Until we engage. Yeah. And even I know a lot of people um, get very negative and complaining about spirit influence when in fact if we each as individuals made the personal choice to live in harmony with God's laws, repent, yeah. forgive, that influence couldn't even happen anymore. No, it, there would be all spirit influence, all negative spirit influence on this planet would be removed completely just by all of us taking that act. That act. So, yeah, we've got a lot. We, you know, this is why God sees us as culpable for even the spirit influence that mm. occurs in our life, because yeah. we are engaging it. We are purposefully choosing to engage it. We are purposefully choosing to feed the addiction of some spirits in order for us to avoid or feed our own addictions. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's a very sad situation on the planet, isn't it, where... The majority of people, even people in developing countries now, have the feeling that they're not responsible for what's happening. No. Just about all of the globe feels like they have no responsibility, even for what's happening in their day-to-day -day life. Yeah. From a soul perspective, from a feeling perspective, yeah. there's a feeling that other people to, are to blame, to blame or it's out of my control or, uh, you there's know. There's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing I Just can do. Just get what you can get right now. Yeah. Get it now. The Epicurean lifestyle too, you yeah. know. Eat and drink, and let's eat and drink and be merry because tomorrow we might die anyway. Yeah. Just get what we can get out of the world yeah. while we've got the opportunity. Yeah. All of these are very unloving concepts and, uh, and, and all have penalties upon our soul. Mm. But the reality is that we don't realise that the pain and suffering that the majority of the world is in quite, uh, right now is directly caused by our ignorance of some very, very basic but very, very important laws of God. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. All right, honey. Thank you so much for that yeah. discussion. It's a pleasure. It's good to talk about it, isn't it? Yeah, it is really good. <laughs>